Christmas and happy holidays, everyone. This is Astro Dim speaking on the solar eclipse happening. Well, starting, I think, around like nine, uh, nine something <laughs> um, on Christmas, right? Um, December 25th, of course, 2019, but it's going to be exact technically. Um, December 26, 2019 at 1217 a.m. at 4 degrees and 17 minutes of Capricorn. Um, And, you know, at the end of the day, solar eclipse is a new moon, but special. And I'll explain why it's special. Um, But let's generally talk about what the new moon is. So generally, the new moon is when the sun and the moon are conjunct. That's what it is astrologically. Astronomically, it means when the sun and moon are um, laterally or horizontally, pretty much like on top of each other. Um, Not literally, but like sun would be a little bit more above, the moon would be a little bit below or vice versa in the view of Earth, right? But what makes this different is that the sun and the moon are... um, Hover, like horizontally and vertically um on like on the in the earth's view like on each other basically right like right on each other so what happens in the solar eclipse of course is the moon is going in front of the sun blocking the sun's rays you know what i mean the sun's um blocking the sun period from the view of the earth and we're not going to be able to see it beyond it being nighttime um it's because we are positioned on the earth. A lot of people in the United States are not going to be able to see it. But a lot of Europe, Africa, and um, West Asia is seeing the eclipse. Okay, um, But no matter if we can see it or not, it's still eclipse energy. So it's strong energy because in our view, the moon is blocking the sun. Okay? Um, and that's significant. That is very significant. The reason why it's very significant is because um, those are our two luminaries within our chart, the sun and the moon. And the thing is, the moon represents our inner self. The sun represents our self-expression, our conscious reactions, um, you know, how we react to things in general, um, our inner light, our ego. And our ego, inner light, and all of that is being blocked at this moment by our inner world, the, the our emotions, our family our comfortability this this is this part of us that's not really expressed um to people as much that the energy within us that tugs at our heartstrings that like blocks our energy it blocks our our excuse me our our (laughs) it blocks our vitality it blocks our ego Um, So a lot of like ego related things could happen. Um, A lot of people are losing energy because the moon energy is blocking the sun energy is blocking our vitality. Our emotions are blocking our vitality. You know what I mean? Our comfortability is blocking our vitality, which is the sun. You feel what I'm saying? Um, And it's just it's just very heavy energy. Um, It definitely speaks of like a lot of like um, karmic releases um it's making you face your emotions not be so ego driven not be so focused on how to consciously react to things this is the time for you to understand your subconscious reactions to things your inner world your emotions your feelings you know what i mean and how they ref- like reflect who you are as a person what things you need to heal within yourself to become the best version of you you feel me so it's very, very interesting energy that's happening here. Um, very, very interesting. And in this go around, since the sun and the moon is going to be in Capricorn, also four degrees Capricorn, which is really interesting because four degrees is a cancer degree. <laughs> you know, so that's very, very interesting. But in general, since the, the moon and the sun is going to be at four degrees Capricorn, right on top of each other we're going through a lot of karmic changes connected to authority and control um it could be authority control within our personal lives authority control within you know your community and how it affects you or the collective consciousness even the whole world you know what i mean 
Um, but in general, internally and externally, we are seeking authority and control within our lives. And the thing is, like the difference between a Capricorn moon and a Capricorn sun, a Capricorn moon is trying to seek authority over their emotions. And so what they do um, naturally is repress their emotions. But what they need to do is um, have control and authority over their emotions to be able to express it in a comfortable place, in a place um, that is safe to them. But regardless, they do need to have some they need to express their emotions and have authority over it by allowing themselves to express it appropriately but within their the comfort of their home or whatever you know what i mean and the and you know that's the capricorn moon but the capricorn sun they need to have authority and control over their um self-expression you know so the reason why capricorns are known as being stoic and uh, you know, not really expressing that much and holding a lot in. It's because they repress themselves in that way. They don't want to see anyone. Uh, they don't want anyone to see them sweat. Excuse me. And so, with both of those energies happening, repressed emotions, um, you know, and repressed action, it for the more, you know, not I, want, I don't want to say low vibrational, but the more, um, the more like immature or younger Capricorn is, is all probably on that wave but the the older Capricorn the more mature Capricorn the more experienced Capricorn what they need to you know and all the Capricorns honestly need to strive to do this to be able to have authority over their emotions by facing it it could be by themselves but having authority over their emotions by facing it and then having authority over how to react to things by facing it you know what I mean? So in the sense of like with the Capricorn sun, if, if they're deciding not to react to things, it has to be because they don't want they don't want to react to it. Not because they, they're worried about others. It's because, well, this is what I don't want to do. So I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? It's because the thing is, is that believe it or not, you expressing your emotions is and, and you uh, expressing it to other people is actually going to help the situation because you know people are aware there, there's an issue there you know what I mean but you repressing your expression how you express yourself and this is any type of self-expression this is you expressing yourself over a, a stupid situation expressing your talents especially your creativity expressing yourself in romance expressing yourself in whatever way your hobbies whatever you know what I mean you know it's it's important not to repress that energy is important to let that part of you out and I know it's hard because you know Capricorns especially in the northern hemisphere um I really feel this you know Capricorn energy is generally the same everywhere but like a southern hemisphere and a northern hemisphere Capricorn are two different people northern hemisphere Capricorn the sun is you know doesn't show as often it's it's at it's less it's less seen for the northern hemisphere you know what I mean so I really feel that the southern hemisphere Capricorns are definitely more brighter, more self-expressive than, tip, than, than, than the typical Capricorn in the northern hemisphere. But as northern hemisphere ones, we really um, we don't express ourselves because the sun don't even come out like that when it's our turn, when it's our season. You know what I'm saying? So beyond that, though, be just beyond that. It's, you know, even if you see the Southern Hemisphere, like they, it's not even like a pride thing, but it is like the Capricorns in the Southern Hemisphere hold in their emotions because they're always being viewed and they want to make sure that they, they're viewed in the best way, but they still ex generally express themselves better than the Northern Hemisphere Capricorn. You know what I'm saying? But beyond that though, you know. It's all about like repression, repressing your actions and how you express yourself, repressing your emotions. And you have to make sure that you're doing this for you to like if you're holding back on your emotions or your expression, that's fine. But you, regardless, you have to express it. You know what I mean? That's what I'm basically trying to say. I know I'm like, I feel like I'm talking in circles to Eclipse Energy. I'm sorry about that. Regardless of what you do, you have to, have to, have to express yourself. And it could be in, in, in private. It don't have to be in public. It doesn't have to be for everybody. You know what I mean? But expression is needed. 
your you need to express your emotions and you need to express yourself via action in this eclipse and you're learning to do it situations are pushing you to do it even me like this 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 solar eclipse is conjunct my neptune and it's conjunct my 12th house and you know it's 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 a situation that already happened to me in, in this day and it was it was weird it was weird it made me feel the type of way it made me sad and it's like christmas it's not supposed to be you're not supposed to be feeling that way you get what i'm saying but I did, and the thing is, is that I noticed that I was doing this. I noticed that I was, like, repressing, and I was like, okay, um, I need to find somewhere in private or sometime in private where I can express these emotions with myself and then, again, express the action that I want to take with somebody else, you know what I mean, um, and just go on from there. And, and yeah, like I, I'm already have a plan on how to like sit, finish this, figure out this situation that happened. You know what I'm saying? And so like, it, it, I can, it, I can really speak to the situation. It's really interesting, but yeah. So again, um, internally and externally, we are seeking authority and control in our lives. Wherever this eclipse is in our chart can show us where in our lives we're trying to seek authority and control and how we're ready for that big transformation you know, how our inner emotions and our actions are aligned. You know what I mean? Our inner emotions and our actions are aligned right now. And so we know what we want. We know what we want. The thing is, though, is that, like, it's best for us to, during the solar eclipse energy, to rest. Be very four of swords type, you know, type of energy. Just to rest and relax and learn from ourselves learn from the scenarios that happened today because the universe is literally lining up for us to 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 let this situation play out for for us to learn you know and it may hurt it may be sad it may be tough um it may be frustrating it may make you angry but it's all a lesson within it for you in order for you to have authority and control over your life all right um, this eclipse is going to be in the first decant of, um, the first decant of, um, Capricorn. And so this is a Saturn decant. Okay. And again, Saturn, um, speaks of authority and control. You know what I mean? It is, um, one of the archetypes of the father of the Zodiac, um, very wise energy, and so that energy of seeking authority and control is heavy, heavy within us right now. It really is. Um, and the thing is, is that like this is making me feel that this transformation of authority and control is not just going to happen within our authority, um, within our personal lives. It's going to happen all around us throughout the world. It's, it's just going to be a biggie. Okay. Um, especially with the combination of Pluto and Saturn being at 22 degrees in January, we're going to have some interesting times here for sure. Okay. So be on the lookout for that. But this just doubles the energy of really seeking and really trying to understand the authority and control we have in our lives and how to expound on that, how to really express that energy more. You know what I mean? So some deep times right now. All right. Um, The solar eclipse is also happening at four degrees um, Capricorn, which is interesting. And so um, let's talk about four, okay? Um, um, Yeah, let's talk about four in the numerology sense. I'm reading off of thesecretofthetarot.com. The energy of four is all about conscientiousness. Wow, I said that fucked up. Conscientiousness. There you go. (laughs) And responsibility which contrasts starkly with the number three the previous root number which um was um was which was connected to unbridled creativity the number four is creative as well but in a more conventional and organized way the number four is aligned with the creative energy that puts human affairs on a firm footing or solid foundation people who are informed by the energy of the number four are hard-working um dependable persistent and productive they make the perfect bookkeepers and office clerks 
that are detail-oriented, de- dedicated, and loyal. Now, another um, thing that I've noticed before, too, if we focus it on astrology, is it's similar type of energy. It's connected with cancer in the, in the fourth house, of course, which is, again, about emotions, home, family, comfortability in your inner world, things that tug at your heartstrings, your ancestry, ancestral trauma, things like that, things that are connected to your personal emotions that affects you directly. You know what I mean? And so, again, this is a very emotional solar eclipse, even though it's in Capricorn. and it, But it's very connected to, like, your inner emotions, of how you process emotions, even though you, like, sometimes repress them and hold them in. Um, you know, a lot of people think that Capricorns are how they express themselves. But they're actually very quite emotional. I can speak to it myself. I'm a Capricorn son. So it's um, definitely real shit right there. And, you know, the degree four is a cancer degree. Um, So, again, that reiterates that energy there. Um, And in tarot, four is all about, um, like, holding back. You know what I mean? Holding back in one way or another. So for instance, four of pentacles is holding back on spending, holding on to your money. Four of swords is holding back on thoughts and just meditating and relaxing and realizing the situation that you've went through and just sitting in that emotion. Um, Four of wands is about celebration, um, not doing much action on that creative endeavor that you was working with, with the two and three of wands, but actually celebrating where you're at right now, really feeling comfortable within where you're at right now. Um, you know, that type of energy. So holding on to that, that, that passionate feeling that you have and, and, and just really celebrating it and, and appreciating it. And then, um, when I have last four of cups is, Um, kind of holding on to you know your emotion um, and not taking action based off what other people feel but holding on to how you feel and if you're not feeling something then you're gonna like not do something it's kind of like that like you're not being swayed at all with the four of cups energy you know what I mean it's almost low-key like a brat and so um, again just holding it together but being within your emotion or being within your within that thought and reflecting that thought um, holding on to the money that you have and you know just holding on being stable being the foundation because Eva can if we bring it back to astrology the fourth house is the foundation house it uplifts the tenth house your your reputation your career your public appearance you know that shit you know what I mean and so it, it's really known as foundation owning you know it's the four seasons um, seasons are very important with tropical astrology it's the base of it and so four is truly the foundation, you know? And so I feel like that we are like building a foundation for us to have authority and control within our lives. Real dope energy for sure. All right. Now let's talk about these aspects being made with this solar eclipse, okay? Um, first aspect I see is that this energy is conjunct Jupiter. So this... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this eclipse energy is going to be definitely like ex- multiplied by a trillion. This is why everyone's emotions are like off. Everyone's extremely tired. Some people are depressed. Some people are struggling this Christmas. Just know that it's this energy that needs to be worked out and closed out. Any huge transformation or transition has this um longing effect um has this longing energy within within the situation because people want to kind of miss what they've had even if it no longer serves them you feel what i'm saying um and so it's really it's just like this is why the energy is heavy it's because the solar eclipse is conjunct jupiter jupiter is all about abundance making things be bigger stronger heavier all right um so just just be aware of that but more than that though you know jupiter does bring you abundance yes i know listen if you if you're like oh no it's at its at its detriment it was at its fall whatever listen listen to my rant in the last episode okay trust me 
you you can get that abundance in Jupiter in Capricorn but you have to make sure you work it the right way and I'm not going to repeat that you can just look at the last episode or it's still last episode okay but the thing is though is that you can get good fortune you can get abundance through this eclipse but the thing is you know again this eclipse is all about having authority and control within yourself um emotionally and you know physically you know as as a being as an expressive being and so um you know once you have that the the things are going to start working for you coming to you opportunities are going to be had you know so it it could work out to your benefit and to your favor for sure okay um another thing too is that um jupiter is connected to different philosophies beliefs religions ideas even foreign travel and things like that and so um if you make any foreign travel plans during the eclipse you know it could really be life-changing and really can help you understand and seek your own authority and control within your life um you know around the eclipse time eclipse energy does last for six months but it's the most potent for the first month uh you know you could be put on into a philosophy belief or idea or maybe even realize a philosophy that you already had has an idea of how you can have more authority and control within your life. And so you definitely have to keep your mind open to that as well. Um, so, you know, just is things to look out for. But the reason why this energy is so heavy is not just because it's in Capricorn. We've been having eclipses in Capricorn for a while. It's been tough, but this one's a little bit different. It's because of this Jupiter energy, okay? The, sol- the solar eclipse is also um, opposite your north node and conjunct the south node. So south node is helping us reflect on authority issues that we've had in the past, our past lives, and just re- you know pe- the, the past within this life that we've have we have right now. Um, and so this is time for us to release what no longer serves us when it comes to issues of authority and control that we have. Whether people allow people that have authority and control to, of us or us having too much authority and control over other people or other situations and things. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're reflecting. We're being introspective. We're, we're figuring out what to let go of. And we, we're letting it go because it no longer serves us. We're in that path. And it's the last elements of it because um, after this eclipse um lunar eclipse that happens in um january on january 12th that's the last no it's not the last it's the second to last bit of eclipses that will happen in the capricorn cancer um nodes it's going to be moving over to you know um gemini and sagittarius i think the last last one's going to happen on the 21st um i believe it's a solar eclipse in um cancer and so, um, you know, we're really closing out phases here. We really, really are. I believe this is the last, no, nope, no, nope, it's the second to last solar eclipse. Yes, yes, yes. And so definitely, you know, realize that for sure. And what we need to be pushing more towards is the North Node. The North Node is about um, realizing your emotions, being able to express them, even if it's in private, um, understanding the things that tug at your heartstrings, nurture yourself and nurture others self-care self-love you know what i mean doing things that make you comfortable understanding and finding your comfortability your true comfortability you know what i mean but again nurturing yourselves and nurturing others emotionally that's the vibe that we need to be on okay that's the vibe that we need to be on but in order for us to push towards that we do need to release some of this authority issues control issues you know what i mean feeling that we can fulfill people if we just have a certain status and you know then we can help them practically but love is things are deeper than practicality there's emotion too you know what i mean it's not that practicality is not deep yes it is but there's more to life than getting things that you want practically you feel what i'm saying so keep that in mind as well this north um this solar eclipse excuse me energy is also conjunct mercury very very interesting energy there too um this is this energy is really interesting because like we are actually understanding a little bit more you know like what's going on at this moment 
we're realizing even if you're not into spirituality even if you're not into like any divinational tool or whatever you're realizing like damn this is happening because I don't have this authority or control that I want to how can I change it you know what I mean like people are being more action forward you know what I mean more action oriented I feel um you know, because Sag energy is natural, is fire, so it's naturally action oriented. But then with this whole ass eclipse being in Capricorn, Capricorn is a cardinal sign, so of course it's action oriented as well. And so, um, yes, we're more on that vibe of like we're realizing through experience, you know, through. Um, and when I say experience, I mean like kind of like realizing the experiences that that are that are happening that have happened within our lives um and 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 thinking like okay because of this that's happening we're finally bringing things together and we're and we're realizing that like you know what a lot of this stuff is panning out the way it's panning out because I don't have authority and control within my life or I'm, I'm placing more too much authority I'm being more too authoritative in a situation or two people or being too controlling two people you feel what I'm saying and so um yeah like we're, we're realizing that we're getting it logically um and we are understanding more of what's happening and we're being more conscious about conscious excuse me about okay what can I do in my day-to-day life um to make this transformation happen appropriately so that's what vibe we're on too um not as strong as the other energies because this is a 10 degree orb but it's definitely significant still okay um the solar eclipse is trying uranus so something random is going to happen um and it's going to instead of affect you it's not going to okay something really can okay <laughs> this is hard to say something really randomly could happen externally it's not going to be like that deep you know what i mean it's not going to be um that tough to deal with but it's going to it's not it's not it's not that big of a deal externally but it's going to be a big to deal to us emotionally uh, because uranus is retrograde and so that's more think that's things that are uh, affecting us um internally more than externally you know what i mean and so something random is going to happen and it's going to um, greatly affect us and it's i think it's more of a like a eureka moment or more of a oh shoot you know what this is what's been happening all this time or you know what I need to actually take this direction uh and it's it's gonna be great it's gonna be harmonious energy and again it's going to be pushing that energy of wanting to um transform your life to have more authority the proper authority and control to have over your life and over situations so you can grow so it's beautiful energy there too um lastly this energy is um, square Chiron. Chiron represents childhood traumas and um, it's the wounded healer, okay? And with Chiron being in Aries, you know, we're facing and realizing childhood traumas connected to ourself, our personality, persona, appearance, but also childhood traumas that's connected to our passions and desires and our motivations right like what keeps us driven what keep what wants what keeps us from wanting to um push forward towards things and how in our childhood did, was that neg- negatively affected you know what i mean like for instance like a lot of people that have mars intercepted are people who have like all this motivation and drive inside but have a hard time executing it because they've been too controlled you know what I mean or was it um you know pushed um enough to really um be consistent with something you know what I mean so it's kind of like that like how your childhood trauma or your past affected your drive motivation personality persona appearance body etc right 
Uh, it's been retrograde for a while, but of course it's been direct for a bit now. And so we're now taking action on healing. But that energy is square the eclipse. You know, the eclipse energy is all about status, reputation, um, career, um, and like basically us having authority and control over certain situations, right? And when you have authority and control over certain situations, you naturally have authority and control over people. Now, Capricorn doesn't care to have authority and control over people, but we tend to have that and tend to be leaders because of how we like to initiate practical change all right um and so it's like always capricorn as a leader and then other people follow along and us like building other people up and getting it going from there the thing is though is that uh while capricorn is doing that is considering the needs and wants of others uh, um, Aries is a little bit different. Aries is running by their own personal passions and their own personal desires. And the thing is, is that like Aries energy is kind of like, okay, but I want to do this and I want to do this now. So I'm going to go for it instead of thinking practically, okay, what will be best for me? How should I handle this situation? Blah, 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 blah. Instead of thinking things through. And so there might be situations in which the eclipse may bring a certain scenario out the scenario will happen right and it brings you back to that childhood trauma of the aries energy of of feeling left out of feeling self like doubt with within yourself like within your drive and motivation within your passions with your personality your persona and your appearance of feeling singled out you know what I mean it may bring those energies out and so then your childhood trauma is like it's like triggered you're, that situation triggers that childhood trauma within you and it's forcing you to face it but it's happening abruptly and it's happening in a way where it just affects you and it's like a, a, it's that deep cut again it's that wounded healer you know what I mean? It's that deep cut. It's like reappearing again. And so this eclipse is actually showing you through pain, sadly, um, from your past on what you need to actually be focusing on. And and, it, and it's like right now, since the, both of our luminaries is in Capricorn, I say definitely try to focus on authority and control within your life so you can be successful within your life. But what it's what what this eclipse is also telling you too is that a you tend to do healing when it comes to childhood traumas connected to your motivation drive personality persona and appearance you still need to work on that there's still things that you need to figure out with that and you're going to be reminded of that um not as harshly within as as you would within the next month or even now you know what i mean because eclipse energy happens like i would say of um like two to four months I mean two to four weeks prior you feel the eclipse energy right so you know you might have thought this situation might already happen you are probably already felt this thing happen you know what I mean but you know it's the most potent within a month um but then you are going to be continuously reminded of you know that that you need to heal that childhood trauma within the next six months so definitely be aware of that okay very important all right so um that's what i got for you guys for the aspects this solar eclipse is going to be life-changing it's we're, we're closing out karmic circles karmic circles karmic cycles there you go <laughs> we're closing out karmic cycles at this time we really are and we're pushing towards um having more control within our lives um having more of a say within how we do things um and just how we can you know be the leader within our own life you know and so it's it's beautiful energy um it's tough energy but it's energy of realization okay you have to keep that in mind too this is energy of realization understanding that a something needs to be done here However, this energy is not too tough. It's a lot of conjunctions and stuff like that. Um, you know, the major aspect that's happening 
within the conjunctions and opposites of this eclipse is a trine within Uranus. So something random and beautiful may happen and it may really inspire you internally um, to be more um, trusting and finding um, when it comes to your authenticity and finding your um, worth within your uniqueness and authenticity. So that's really beautiful. But there is that minor, um, it's not really a minor aspect, it's a major aspect, but to a minor energy, which is Chiron. Chiron is very interesting, very special, but at the end of the day, it is still a dwarf planet. So it's not going to be as heavy. It's not going to be as heavy as um, this Chiron. I mean, as the Uranus energy. So definitely um, keep that in mind, okay? So, yeah, um, it's, this energy is not going to be that bad. Just keep holding on. This is a this is you have to allow yourself to feel so you can let this shit all out. And so, and then when you get into twenty twenty, you you know you're, you you know this a lot of that energy is out there, it, it, and now it could be worked on, and now you can build yourself for this next decade, okay? All right, so much love to all of y'all. Have a beautiful, beautiful Christmas. Um, Happy holidays and have a beautiful, beautiful solar eclipse. All right, peace. Oh, also, um, patrons, I got you. I got you. It's going to be a little late, but I got you. We're going to be talking about the fixed stars, the aspect patterns. Actually, there's no aspect patterns this go around. So I'm going to talk about this eclipse in each of the houses and how it's going to affect you the fixed stars that's happening within this eclipse and then we're going to pull some cards figure out how this eclipse is going to affect you my niggas yes